Alright, welcome back to part 5 of the Asteroid Tutorial in Godot. In this one we're going to be uh, making the bullet, we're going to be uh, making the bullet move and we're going to make the player shoot the bullet. Hopefully we'll fit all of those in without making the tutorial too long. Let's get started. One thing I managed to forget is we need the actual sprite for the bullet. Um, if we go into the, the uh, space shooter that I downloaded from Kenny um, in part 1, we can go into this lasers um, folder, in the PNG folder, and I'm just going to take this uh, laser blue uh, 01, I'm just going to drag that into sprites. Um, the I'll drag it in again to sprites, so it's actually in there. Um, we're going to use this one to set up our bullet. The awesome news is that should be pretty uh, familiar. We've uh, done this for the player and we've done it for the asteroids. So all you need to do is you're going to create um, a new child of the game in here. So add a new child node. And again, we're going to make this another Area 2D. Uh, I'll rename this. Uh, cancel there. So click on this and um, rename that to uh, Bullet. Then the uh, Bullet's going to need the actual sprite. So I'm going to add in the sprite and drag the new sprite, this uh, laser one over here. Um, I'm actually going to set its uh, rotation to 90 degrees because I want the forward direction um, to be in this the in the positive X so if I change this to 90 um, you'll see that it just points in that direction and the last thing is we need the collision on this occasion because um, it's pretty much rectangular I'm just going to make this um, collision shape rather than the collision polygon and I'm going to make sure that that shape is a rectangle. Um, just zoom in so I can get this right and I'll just stretch it to where I need it to be and drag this middle one so that we've got something like that. So there we go, we've got the um, bullet set up. Now that it's set up I'm just going to make sure that we can't select the children and I'm going to turn this um, one thing into an instanceable scene like we did with the asteroid in the last one. So I'm just going to save this branch as a scene. It's given the name of bullet and I'm just going to make sure it's in the scenes folder just along with the asteroid here. So I hit save and we now have an instance of all scene in our scenes folder that we can use to uh, make lots of bullets when we need them. I can now delete this from my scene here because I don't need it anymore because we're going to instance them in. Now I'm going to add the, um, the code that will spawn the bullets in. I'm actually going to add it to the game script. It doesn't seem to make much sense because uh, it's the player that's going to be shooting the bullets. But the way, the reason I'm going to do that is because um, when we instance them as the game scene and when we add it as a child, it actually becomes a child of the game. If we were to add it as a child of the player, then as the player rotates around and as the player moves, the bullet will also be affected by that because it will be a child of the player. And yes, people might say that you could just reference up the way to the game and then um, make it a child so it's from the player. But um, I have read that it's better to uh, call down and signal up in uh, inside of Godot. So what I'll do is I'll just make the game be the uh, person in charge. It really doesn't make a heck of a difference, but the game can call down in towards the player and find the player quite easily as a child so that we know where to spawn the, um, the bullets from. Uh, we have done this before. We have instanced things and uh, we've taken keyboard input and, uh, well, if you really wanted to, what you could do is just stop the video, give it a try yourself, and um, then um, come back uh, later if you have given it a go and see if you can uh, see if you can get it, um, see if you've done it the same way as I would do it. So, in order to have our scene to um, instance, we're just going to say um, that we're going to have an on ready var bullet and now we're going to do what we did with the asteroid we're just going to preload and we're going to preload the bullet scene in this occasion um, that will give us a brand new bullet that we can instance now we're going to do this inside of the uh, process um, so if you create the func process func underscore process um, this is where we're going to uh, check for the keys press and shoot the bullet so uh, the first thing would be the key press. So we're just going to do this as an if statement. So we're going to say if input dot, and then we can 
use this is action uh, just pressed. So this will, this is action just pressed only happens when you actually press the action, um, and then it won't fire again the next frame. If we were to do this as the is action down, it would make this fire every single frame, um, and make this if statement fire every single frame. So we'd actually shoot our bullets. It's kind of not what we want. Um, in here is where we actually want to shoot the bullet. So we'll need to instance the scene first up. So we'll create a new bullet. Uh, we'll call this new bullet, and we'll say that it equals to a bullet dot instance. So we'll create this brand new instance of that bullet, and then we need to uh, find out where to place that bullet on the scene. We do need to set its position, um, and it's not as hard as it seems because we have a hierarchy from the game down to the player. And for now, I think we'll just reference the player's position and rotation in order to set this bullet's position and rotation. So we'll just say that with a new bullet dot position is equal to, and then you use the dollar sign to reference down. So I'm just going to say um, dollar sign player dot position, and that means that it will match the player's position. The uh, new bullet dot rotation we're also going to set to be equal to the player's rotation because, as you know, we're moving around. So this is just matching up. Oops, I used the wrong one. Uh, this is just matching up the position and rotation as we spawn in our new bullet. Uh, right now the bullet's not going to move, we've not done that yet. Um, but we will get around to that. And then once we have that bullet and it's been given its position and rotation, we'll just instance it as a, sorry, add it as a child of the game. Uh, Let's just test that and make sure it works. So if we do just hit the play, you'll see that it works perfectly fine. Um, as we um, hit the space bar, which is what we set up as our action, it will instance in our bullet, and that bullet um, will be at the correct position in rotation based on the player. So that's a pretty good start, but we do need the bullets to move. To do that, I'm going to make myself a brand new script. The uh, script, there's a couple of ways of doing this. If we create the script by right clicking over here and saying new script, we just need to make sure that uh, we inherit from the correct thing. We want this to create, to inherit from an, an area 2D um, because it is um, just like the um, asteroid and the player, we need to have this be able to access the collision nodes. So you can do it this way where we click create and it adds it straight in here. The, uh, unfortunately I forgot to um, rename that one so I'm just going to remove it again and we'll try it the other way. If you try it the other way by selecting the bullet scene and hitting the plus, um, it automatically knows that it's going to inherit from the area 2D and it even gives it the correct name and uh, calls it um, bullet.gd. Um, when I do that you'll notice it put the, the uh, bullet.gd in there. I think I can just drag it safely into the scripts folder and it should be alright. So whichever way you do it, you should end up with uh, bullet.gd script inside your scripts folder. And um, I'm just going to quickly check that mine's um, is in, been set up correctly. Oh, I think it has. Uh, so the bullet.gd uh, script is attached to the uh, bullet. And then once we've got this, we can just open this up so we can start writing our stuff um, because I deleted one you see you get this uh, cog as well so I'm just going to um, close that so because we don't need it uh, so the first up is I'm going to actually make this an export var so we can get the uh, the speed of this bullet um, at uh, inside the inspector so I'm going to say um, export var speed equals 500 that will give us uh, the speed of our bullet and then we're going to need our process function so um, Funk underscore process. Uh, all this is going to do is move the bullet. Now we need to move it in the direction that the bullet is facing, and we've done that when we did the player as well. So we uh, all we really need to do is we need to move it. So we set its position to be equal to position plus, and then you use uh, transform dot x, which was the uh, right um, the x axis, the right axis of the um, player um, rotated based on its transform and you multiply that by speed and then by delta so you get um, speed per second so it'll be 500 pixels per second and let's just test this to make sure it works because I'm kind of hopeful that it will so we'll see that it does work it works perfectly fine and um, the bullets are, are pretty good but you'll notice that they're appearing sort of um, right in the middle of the player which um, 
for big bullets like this kind of looks a little bit weird so we can change this I'm going to change it with uh, a couple of things what I'm going to do is just going to open up this um, bullet scene uh, and go to the bullet scene see the 2D I'm going to make this um, this bullet actually a little bit smaller uh, first up so if I select the the whole bullet scene click the scale and um, hold shift um, and I'll make the whole thing a little bit smaller and um, what I could do to make uh, to make everything work better is I could actually move this um, this bullet across to the right hand side rather than do anything fancy so if I select that and again I hold the shift and I move it so that it appears just off to the right hand side we're well, imagining that the player's center is here so I'm going to move it even further um, and then just going to save that and we'll try that and see if that works so that's like a, a fairly simple way to get this to to do it without having to do anything else it's quite common to have different points around your um, around your sprite where you can spawn things from we could if we wanted to create a child node which would be um, uh, simply a node 2D uh, that would uh, be the point that we wanted the bullet to appear from and then when we reference when we instance the um, in here uh, sorry in the um, game script where we instance the um, the bullet we would rather than just the, the straight up player we would find the um, player and then the dot or the player forward slash and then the, the object that we wanted to spawn from uh, that is another way of doing it and you can try that if you want if you think it's better if you wanted two bullets it might be um, better that you had points that you spawned them from rather than um, spawning them straight from the player uh, maybe we'll leave that for another video though so there we have it um, we've managed to uh, make our bullet we've managed to make the bullet move and we've managed to make the bullet shoot from in front of the player that's pretty much everything that we wanted in this video. In the next one, we'll do the collision detection and um, add some sound effects and explosion and some polish to this.